Good afternoon. Have you enjoyed the day? Good. Hope it's not just been interesting, hope it's been useful. Sli slightly different. Okay, so for our last plenary today, um, Sharon Visser's here. She's going to share the Ngami halfway story. Sharon's travelled all the way from Botswana to, uh, to come and see us. Uh, she'll tell us a little bit about Botswana and about the challenges. So pl please welcome Sharon onto the stage. Thank you. Good afternoon, people. I'd like you to come with us today on, the, on a quest of learning lean in Botswana. I want you to journey with me as we travel to a Toyota dealership in the north of Botswana, nestled between the vast Kalahari Desert and the meandering Okavango Delta. Here we are. You can see the Kalahari Desert in the bottom, the Okavango Delta at the top. And there we are nestled right next to it. While we are looking at maps, we need to understand some differences. So let's compare. There we have Botswana superimposed over the United Kingdom, so you can see the vastness of our, our area. If you lived in Botswana instead of the United Kingdom, you would be 115 times more likely to have HIV AIDS, die 26 years sooner, make 56% less money, and be part of a population of only 2.2 million people. Oops. The Global Competitiveness Report for 2013-14 has for the six year running described Botswana's poor work ethic as the most problematic factor for doing business in the country. Yeah? Oh, okay. If you look at this map, you'll see where we are situated in the Northwest District. But our contract with Toyota actually covers the Hansi District and right up into the north of Botswana into Kasani, which is right next to Victoria Falls. This is a vast area, a vast rural area. At times, we even supply parts and service to Tsabong in the south of the country that is 1,400 kilometers away. Here, you have, you can look at our roads. Um, we have sand roads, long, 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 hot, sandy roads. We have deep river crossings in the delta. And we have some tarmac roads with large grey roadblocks. <laughs> These roads actually will tell you about the type of vehicles we service and care for. And they're not like the ones you'll find in the United Kingdom. These vehicles travel in very, very harsh conditions and need a lot of care and attention. Sorry, I'm just having a problem with this. A lot of this we do in 40 degree heat. In fact, last week we did it in 43 degree heat. As you know, all great crests start with a crisis. <laughs> And we put in the screen because whatever people say, when you have a big change like that, that's actually how people feel inside. It's frightening for all the staff and all the people wondering what their job's going to be like now. In 2013, we were sold to the halfway group after being owned and managed by the same shareholders for 25 years. It was a time of fear and insecurity. Some of my staff had never worked for anybody else during that 25 years. It was all they knew and all they understood. Sadly, Ngami Toyota was affectionately called the salt mine by the previous owners. 
I personally have always likened her more to a dragon, a real, live, fire-breathing dragon. She generated much gold, but did not release it willingly. Often owners, staff and management came out of the fray, singed and wounded. Sometimes we enjoyed the fight. When I was younger, it was a wonderful fight. And we came out with our booty, feeling very proud of ourselves. With time, she grew. The bigger she got, the more out of control she became. The only way the managers and owners knew how to control her was heavy chains made of the word no. And maybe give everything to me to sign. Or let's do another spreadsheet for that. And update me every day. I think we can, we've all been in that position. We all know what that's like. It's an unhappy business. Always under the control of somebody with no inspiration and no way of looking forward into a happy future. But in August 2013, two brave knights of Lean came into our lives. <laughs> Sir David Brunt and Sir Terry O'Donoghue. They brought with them a gift I call Doragon no Sasayaki, Dragon Whisperer, a.k.a. Lean. This is really a story of how we learn to use Lean to bring a dragon of a business under harness. This in turn made a big difference to our productivity and cash flow. I think you can all read those numbers, but I think it's probably best for you to look at the index because it actually shows in, in easier terms the improvement that happened. We started our journey by understanding that time is value to the customer. During the first days of our training, David Brunt started to count seconds when we were looking at the work. At that moment, Africa time got a violent jolt. There may even have been a small earth tremor. You know, Africa time has a reputation of being very strict. So I looked for ways to teach Africa about lean and about time. Well, mostly about time. So we started very simply with an abacus, all very welded up with the time, each nut being 10 minutes and a red nut an hour. And we were planning the work in the workshop. And it was teaching us a time at a beginning and an end. And that's how we started to understand that we couldn't stretch time. We did the same on our wash bay. At the start of the day, we had a little cars all lined up on shelves that had a beginning and an end with, um, with time slots in. And as time went past, the, the marker would move up and the cars that hadn't been washed had to move up. And there you'll see the start of the day, we were doing okay. At 3.30 in the afternoon, we had a pileup and we had to do something about it. So we were making time more visual and teaching them to understand that time is not flexible. It has a beginning and the end and you cannot make it. This grew into our control of the workshop and we have the start of a day and the end of a day. Here you will see the start of the day, all the vehicles booked in and as they come into the system, as they're received, it's just on a magnetic chip and it goes through the board into wherever it is at the time so we can monitor it and see where it is so everyone can see. And at the end of the day, you'll see all the vehicles that have gone. So that way we track the movement throughout the day and we could see visually and we move them physically. Um, I know lots of people can use apps 
and things like that. Um, we didn't have that. We just went the simple route and the physical route of moving things. Because moving, moving little chips along boards actually you can get quite satisfied by. And it helps you to stand next to a board together with your team and look and see what's happening. So throughout the day, whenever I walk through that area, I can see exactly where the vehicles are and where, what their status is, and I can start to assess problems because it really works like a spreadsheet. And you've got too many in, in the row, you know you have a problem. Learning about time. Don't get lost in time. It's very easy to get lost in time. So we put up another magnetic chart where we have our parts on order for the workshop and the completed orders. And then we tally every day. How long has it been there waiting for a vehicle or waiting to get it fitted? Um, so we know we have a problem. I think if you look at that, it's quite clear. The first one is quite a big problem. Um, so in that case, it means that we're going to be able to prevent dead stock in the business or we can chase up and follow up and make sure that problems are solved and they're not just lost in time. We then learned about standard work to building quality as a value to the customer. And this is our wash bay. As a general rule, people on a wash bay are not the most educated of our staff. They're usually young male entrants into the business and a lot of them cannot read and write well. Um, so we decided that we would give them comic books to read. So we made little plasticine figures which we move around with props and in that way it made it a lot easier to understand when we have a language barrier and a, and a, a literacy barrier. When we were doing this, we actually realised that this actually helps everybody. So, even our staff that are better educated, like our service advisors, we use toys and cars to plot how we move around the vehicle, how we talk to each other, how we talk to the customer, to um, practice the changes to the work so that they can practice with their little figures talk to each other, move people around, and then when they go out to the actual customer, they're actually very well practiced in what they have to do. So it doesn't really matter how well educated you are. Toys are fun. We use conventional methods to communicate. This is our Green Bay showing the standard work. We learned about Kaizen, and we began to understand that Kaizen can only be done after watching and understanding the work. This is a wheel bearing being packed by hand. It's a, a time-consuming task, and it does a lot of damage to the technician's hands. So I said to our, our service manager, you know, Michael, let's make something to stop this. So I didn't show him how to make something, but he made something. And now you can chew two bearings. We've saved 20 minutes on the task. And it's just made by ordinary little plumbing supplies from over the road. Nothing special, replaceable parts. It's not an issue to fix it or build lots of them that we need. And it saved 20 minutes. 20 minutes is a lot of money and a lot of time and it saved a technician labour and saw hands. We had a problem on our electric bay where we were finding the people that were doing the work were avoiding printing out the documentation so that they, when they were doing a diagnosis they were trying to jump to conclusions instead of actually using the documentation they were meant to do. So, once again, we looked at the work. And while we were looking at the work, I thought, that's a big pile of papers. Imagine having to go through those papers and follow those lines. It's really easy to get confused. So, 
we just made a little stand with a plastic cover, a thick plastic cover, and they slot in. And now our technicians can use a whiteboard marker to fo follow and track for faults on, on, the, on the plastic sheeting so that they can solve problems easier. And nothing gets dirty, nothing's complicated, it's less likely to make a mistake. This saved a lot of time in that area of the business and it made sure that we fix it right first time because we were using the correct documentation to do so. Obviously we're a Toyota dealership and we, we try to be very environmentally friendly and we have to um, get all the oil out of the oil filters. And the traditional method is actually just to leave them to drain. But the problem comes in, which one comes first? So people get confused and they start dumping out oil filters that have still got oil in. So what we did is we just put up ordinary cheap plastic drains, gutters. And they just sit in the gutters for the amount of time. And there's four gutters and we, they rotate. So it's really easy to know when to um, send the, the filter for recycling. This is our wash bay. As I said before, the guys in the wash bay are young. And if you give them a power washer lance, they immediately turn into Darth Vader. <laughs> it's like a magic act. And then they want to use that lance as much as they possibly can because it's a really exciting thing to do. So we, we decided to pour, spoil their fun, shame. And we put up a simple tank with a simple pump made a simple arch out of ordinary plumbing supplies, put the soap in the tank, and so now we soap and wet the vehicle, and we save five minutes per vehicle. And the last, the lance actually lasts a lot longer too. And in that way, everybody gets the vehicle quicker. We saw that using toys to explain purpose, movement, and, dimen and dimensions help people are not able to visualize or read a diagram. A lot of our staff, we, we need to remember, are not very literate, but they are very handy. They can put anything together for me if I show them how. But when you draw a plan, you can tend to draw a little bit of a blank because they cannot visualize it. So by using toys and erector sets, it's much easier for them under, to understand shape and movement. So it also helped them to Kaizen. Because now, when I showed it to them, they said, no, no, you can't do it this way. You'll have to do it that way. So when they're playing with the toys, putting things through the, the arch, they came up with their own ideas. So it made them more creative. We started to learn about flow. Our very first task in flow was to actually look at how we parked our vehicles. And... At that stage, we drove in at any place and parked anywhere. So we started, first of all, by distributing our vehicles into special parking areas and making sure that it was a one-way flow. We learned quite a lot about what batch production does. Here was our, wash, our original wash bay, and we used to do three vehicles at a time. Vehicles were coming out randomly at 31 minutes average, per wash with poor quality. Then we put it into a single lane flow, and my goodness, the guy that I was teaching could not believe it, because I asked him, why are you only doing these 31 minutes? No, my face said, it's because of the two buckets I was giving him to wash the car with. And I said, no, it's because you're not doing it right. Um, so we did single lane flow. Vehicles were coming out a steady flow average of one every 16 minutes with good quality. And we didn't ever really have to worry again about being able to get all the vehicles washed in the day. We go back again to automa automa automation. And you can see how a simple and expensive automation can improve the flow. Because that's what we're trying to do all along, was improve the flow. Taking the additional time off the valet of five minutes. We then looked at two-stage service, 
we had been doing one stage service in our express bay, and it gave us 122% efficiency. Wanting to improve flow, and on the time it took to get the vehicle back to the customer, we added a second stage. This second stage gave us a 280% efficiency with adding only one staff member. We then started a pre-diagnostic bay. This was our, we call our orange bay. And it was put into place to make predict unpredictable work into predictable work without disrupting the flow. We hope to send a vehicle off the pre-diagnostic bay with a go-ahead and parts so that the technician receiving the vehicle could start and finish the work without any kind of interruption. So in 2014, if you look there, we've got, um, we're running between 100 and 120. And then 2015, between 120 and 140% efficiency. So that's a 20% increase. To improve the flow, we also looked at how we can move the paperwork around the business. So it's quite a large area with quite a lot of walking. So we put one of our more elderly staff members who really was going more into retirement mode into being a postman or, and doing a milk round for us. And so we made little American style boxes by the local tinsmith, as many as we need and we do a milk round, a continuous milk round to make sure the paperwork flows into the administration area. And since we've been doing that, we haven't had lost documents. It's just improved the flow of the documents and losses of documents beyond belief. After we'd done these things, we decided we wanted to teach our dragon to dance because they were getting so clever. As we improved the flow in the workshop at the back areas, um, we still couldn't get past 30 days, 30 vehicles without an all fall down. Um, we'd forgotten to do something, or the paperwork wasn't right, the invoice wasn't ready. There, were, there was always an issue. And the problem was that the administration could not keep up with the flow of vehicles. As we sped up on the one side, the other side just couldn't cope. Because we need to remember we do have, still have the literacy levels, the communication problems, and the language barrier to deal with. Oops. That's what our Ngami Toyota Service Administration was the Department of Heroes and Firefighters. Guaranteed to provide erratic service and get things done in half measures. It wasn't really their fault. It's just the way it was, because the one side was operating really well and the other one just couldn't handle it. I took the step of putting the complete administration of service and repair into a single lane flow from start to end. I was very afraid, because it was a huge task to take with the documentation of the business. We started the process by mapping skill levels we had and the ones we needed using colour coding. So we looked at current skills, new, new production, new TPS tasks, new TPS tasks still to be learnt, rotational skills, other department support, replacement of full position if required, and can assist if the other is busy. Then map, we then map, them, map the work using the time it took for each small task for one vehicle and who would be doing them. Just a, this is just a small portion of the, mask, of, the, of the map. So you can see we map every little item in detail how long it took and gave it to the best person in the line. We then laid out our, our work area, first of all with a a noodle, a pool noodle that was, worked as an andon and clips onto the glass. And then we had a yellow square and a red square. We must understand this was the first part of the experiment. 
And the yellow square was for our working square, and the red square was if we had a problem, we could take the, the paper and put it into the red square. And then we put up the noodle, and then someone would come and help us uh, and decide what we were going to do with it so we could try and develop the flow. It's changed a lot now. Um, I just thought that I'd show you how we started. Um, as in all these things, you have to kaizen and, and, and see how we're going to make it work. And we did eventually make it work. We started the big experiment. And it was stressful. I cannot deny how stressed I was about doing this. This is four months into the experiment. And you can see here, we've been phoning the customer to ask them their opinion. And you can see the improvement in what they felt, the customer. We saw other benefits. We saw that our ev level of errors had gone down enormously. We saw the vehicles going to the customer so much quicker. We saw ourselves getting our invoices ready on time, every time. There were so many benefits to it. And the staff were so much happier. They were so much more in control of what they were doing. It became a happy workplace. We no longer need firefighters or superheroes. We are now able to process 50 vehicles a day and they can cope with it within the, within the given times. And we've had no real problems to deal with since we started the process. None of this could have been accomplished without 5S. This is in Garmi in 2013. That's what it looked like. This is in 2016. It's still not a pretty business. It will never be a pretty business. It's an old building with lots of old equipment, and it has a lot of work to be done on it still. But it's looking a lot better. This was our engine and gearbox room in 2013. You wouldn't like your engine to be done there, would you, really? This is our engine and gearbox room in 2016. And it's been set up also to take flow into consideration with the first stage being the stripping, and then the cleaning, and then the measuring, and then the assembling. So it also has a flow. And initially, when we first started doing this, we had a lot of comeback engines. We haven't had a comeback engine for the whole of 2016. Sometimes, our Ingami dragon still slips the harness and goes on the rampage. But there are more and more days she sings and dances with joy to the song of Paul, and all is right in our world. Have you ever heard a dragon sing? Well, my staff got together, and they wanted to show you all how, dragon, how the dragon sings, because they really felt that they wanted to share with you their joy in Lean. <laughs> They didn't practice for weeks and weeks and weeks. They did what Africa does best. They sang in harmony. And for them, Lean brought them harmony. It brought them harmony into their workplace. It brought them joy in their days. And they wouldn't want it any other way. And so the dragon is happy. What I learned was that Lean, like Arthur's sword, Excalibur, honours those with the right heart's motivation. Not that the tools do not work for everyone, but if you want to be a real Dragon Whisperer, you must search your heart daily. Thank you, everybody.
Thanks, Sharon. It's a super, it's a super story, isn't it? Um, are there any questions? That, okay, so uh, can we put the Slido up for, uh, for Sharon? Okay, so first one. So did the lean guys get support from process owners? So do you want to tell them a little bit about your lean team? Lean team as in my staff. Uh, yeah, well you don't have a lean team, do you? No, no. We just we just our team, we're just a team together. Okay, so th there isn't a lean team. No, no. This is all done by the line. It's done by the people that are doing the work, isn't it? Yeah. You find the time to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. Um, how helped or interv intervened work ethics in Botswana with implementing lean? How helped or intervened our work ethics? What are the work ethics like? Well, they say they're very bad. I just must have these unusual, amazing people working. <laughs> because m my team couldn't have done that without work ethics. So one wonders about all these, this research that happens. If it actually is about what's right or about how people run their businesses. And then the last one is, what, what's the next step? Where's the next set of problems? Next Sales is pretty bad, isn't it? <laughs> we, we have a lot of fun there. Yes, um, we have focused a lot on the workshop because it was, as you see, our weakest area. And it is one of our main income streams. Um, so we, we've actually focused recently a lot in parts. And now we will be going on to our, our sales area to see what we can do to help them. But, but as a general rule for me, um, once you speed up the one side, it actually encourages you to go to the other client side, as, as happened in our workshop reception, because everything quickens. And you can either decide to slow down, or you can decide to make the other wheels turn. Um, I think we must choose to make the other wheels turn, so we can go around the track faster. Okay. And then, uh, next one, how did you find Lee? How did we find Lee? Yeah. Through Terry. Uh, yeah, it came through Terry from, from Halfway. Um, I, I'd read about it through Toyota, um, <laughs> but I hadn't actually had any experience with it. Um, I'll be honest, when it first came, I thought, oops, these are those time and motion guys you see in those black and white movies <laughs> <laughs> that everyone's afraid of. Um, but we actually found that it made such a big difference to us. And none of my team would want it any differently. Great. Okay. Super. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.